Shelley Quinn, and we welcome you once again to 3ABN Today. And we just always, please don't think that when we say this, what I'm getting ready to say, that this is rote, because it's not. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your love and your prayers and your financial support of 3ABN, because frankly, we couldn't be ministering around the world without you. If you didn't partner with us, we couldn't afford to do this and nobody would be blessed. But I am so excited about our special guests today because this is something I was explaining to one of the guests. This is a, She's been here several times before that you do so many interviews, you don't always remember the stories. You meet somebody for about 50 minutes and you think, I'll never forget that story, but you do. Her ministry is one that was so unique that it really did touch my heart and it's going to touch yours. And I remembered as soon as I saw her, I remembered dear Barbara near Barbara. We're so glad you're back again. Well, I'm glad to have you as my interviewer too. Oh, well, we've made some good friends here. Yes. And, and you are a very special lady. You are the national director for it's my very own. Yes. And we're going to explain actually in a nutshell, what you do is provide a bag for children who, mm -hmm. you know, the opioid crisis is, is so bad. And what happens is when people find, and we, we had it here in our own um, area recently, where somebody had a meth lab in their home and DCS and the police show up and here you are in the middle of the night grabbing some little child away from their parents and and this is the only security they know and they're being taken away with strangers. Well, It's My Very Own provides a bag and it's, it's not just any bag and a homemade quilt and all kinds of goodies that we'll tell you about. And it has some very uh, far reach. It has a far reaching yes, impact. Mm -hmm. And so we're very excited about that. But you've brought someone else special with you this time. And this is Susan Schnell's yes. first time at 3ABN. And you are the international director for It's My Very Own. Yes. How long have you been serving in that position? Since February. But okay. Yes. All right. So we are very excited to hear this story. And they've got some amazing personal stories, just how the Lord has led. I know you will be blessed by this interview, so please stay with us. But first, we have a special friend of mine. And uh, I love her. She's from Australia. She's a sweet, sweet sister in the Lord. And I love her voice. Her name is Sandra Interman. I don't I've know if you her. know her, yes. but she, the first time I heard her sing, she has, she controls her vibrato. There is no vibrato till the very end. And then all of a sudden it comes in like a slow wave and it's just beautiful. But mm -hmm. when she sings, she sings from the heart because she has such a close relationship with the Lord and she is going to sing for us that's the day. There are burdens that I carry every day. Sometimes 
Sometimes they make me want to cry Hopeless feelings harbored deep inside my heart And I find it hard to hold my head up high But in the middle of the darkness in my life Find the strength to carry on As I am holding to a promise Jesus made And I know it won't be long till we'll be gone day that I am waiting for and that's the day that I am longing for and if you feel there is no meaning in your life and it seems you've lost your way Listen closely to the voices deep inside And remember what the Savior has to say You know, we just want to thank Sandra Interman so much, and that was Christy Sipek that was singing with her, and they're dear friends and, and wonderful Christian women. Well, if you are just joining us a little late, our special guests today are Barbara Neer and Susan Schnell, and they have an amazing ministry. But before we jump off into the story of the ministry, tell us a little bit about you, Barbara. Did you grow up in a Christian home? Actually, I did, but when I was 18, I married out of the church and walked away. I wasn't mad at God. I wasn't mad at anything in the church. I just married out of the faith, and my father tried to talk me out of it, and he told me what would happen, and he was right. Everything he said is what I did, and it took me over 40 years to come back. But here I am. Amen. And when you came back, um, what was it in your personal life that got you interested in helping children, particularly children who are, I guess you could say, whose parents are drug addicts? Well, uh, my youngest daughter was into drugs for better than 25 years. Mm. She wanted to out, she tried, and I tried to help her, but she just couldn't, couldn't do it. And she had children, and uh, we did take the children from her, not on a permanent basis, but just to help her get her act together. 
and uh, it's two little boys, right? Uh, then later on, she had two more, the two little boys. At this time, she was so involved into the drugs that the entire time that she was pregnant, she was drugged. And mm -hmm. when the baby was born, he was addicted to drugs. Mm -hmm. And it has a lasting effect on the baby. Yes, it does. And uh, the Child Protective Services removed the children from her. And uh, they gave her 18 months to get her act together. And she could have the children back but she wouldn't even show up and she apologized to me later she says i am so sorry that i i chose the drugs over my children mm -hmm. and uh and it wasn't long after we uh, got the children that uh, we had to argue with the child protective services in the state that she was in because they didn't want to adopt them out of the state and I told him, I said, I don't care what your rules are. <laughs> They're my grandchildren, and I want them. And so they eventually saw it my way, and they allowed us to bring the children down, and the fathers signed the children away, and my daughter was able to legally adopt them. And six months after that, uh, I was watching, well, I was actually working at the computer, and I had the TV on and listening to the 10 o'clock news. And uh, this news anchor came on and she was talking about, I wasn't paying any attention. You know how you're I listening, know, but exactly. you're not. And she mentioned meth orphans. And that got my attention immediately. Mm -hmm. And I turned and I looked at that and I started listening. And it was a drug bust. And I was watching it. They were taking the parents out in handcuffs and the reporter went over to the window. The children were still in the house. Terrified. Terrified, they were just sobbing. I mean, they weren't just crying or screaming, they were sobbing. And that hit me really hard. And I told Jack, I said, you know, there should be something that can be done. And, uh, and the amazing thing is that the Lord was, starting to work on my heart. Just before that, I had been praying, Lord, I want to work for you, but I don't know what you want me to do. Yes. And that's when the idea for the bags happened. And my daughter called me, my oldest daughter, and uh, she says, Mom, I just had this idea what we could do. At the very same time, I was getting, well, I had called her, but she was going to call me. Uh. And this is how it actually started growing. And uh, this uh, was like at Thanksgiving time. And uh, it was amazing. Uh, we sat down, we put it together, we, we had prayed, and the results is what you see here, uh, we immediately went out and started buying toys and such that were on sale because after, you know, Thanksgiving right. and, and so on. So let me just stop for just a second because we're, we're kind of dancing around this. The idea was to, you know, you will see these little children when they are being ripped apart from their parents, parents being taken off in handcuffs, and often these little kids, they, they grab maybe a garbage bag and put something in the garbage bag and the little children are being taken away without anything. And so what they've done here, I'm gonna grab this one, but what this ministry does is since they don't have a suitcase, you make them a really pretty bag yes. to carry. I, I, and I love this one over here for the little boy, if we can get a shot of that one. But you make a, a bag, and in this bag, to me the most amazing thing is a handmade quilt. Yes. And so you sew and make a handmade quilt. You can see here, we've got the contents of one of the bags here. And this is such a cute one. This is E is for elephant, G is for giraffe. Got the little matching pillow. And this is for age three and under, right? Yes. 
and you have a hedgehog, <laughs> a hedgehog book. You've got, tell us all, you've got the... Uh, what? We have pacifiers, we put a bottle in, and a sippy cup, depending on what they need, and we put toys, a few little toys, and then hygiene products or personal care items, toothbrush, a brush for their hair, and soap, you know, the baby wash and baby lotion. Now, actually, what did uh, DCF tell you about these bags and as far as making it easier to place? Well, one caseworker told me, she said, I would not have had a successful placement for this child if it wasn't for your bags. She said, because you covered all the bases, we had no supplies, and the foster care parents didn't have any either. And she said, you covered all the bases with this, and we were able to have a successful placement for a child. And you know, you think about something so simple. I remember the story that you told from the very first time you were here, yeah. Barbara, and or the first time I interviewed you at least, you told the story of a little boy who was holding on to his bag in the back of the police car and feeling around, reached in the pocket, and what happened? Well, he was actually 12 years old, and he and his sister had been removed, and they were taking him to their foster home, and he was hugging the bag and he was feeling in the front where the pocket is, where the personal care is, and he reached into it and he pulled out a toothbrush and he says, oh great, I got my own toothbrush. I don't have to share anymore. Oh, see, we, we just can't even imagine what these children go through. But this is so precious, uh, especially the quilts. Tell us how these quilts are made. Okay. Uh, this was what the Lord required. Uh, when I asked him uh, if I could, you know, I wanted to do something, and, and when he started laying this out, he laid it out. This isn't our own idea. And he, he just asked, what do you have in your hands? Well, I had a lot of fabric. I used to teach sewing and had a fabric store. And so I had a lot of fabric. And I said, that's what I have. He says, we'll start there. And I said, but I don't know how to make quilts. Well, he says, you have a book. And he told me exactly where to find it. And we had moved so much, I had no idea where it was at. And I went there and there it was. Mm -hmm. And it was this pattern. And uh, so I went and started digging fabrics out to do it. But he said that he wanted quilts. We could use fleece, but they're not, they don't have the love. When these quilts are made, as we're putting it together, we obviously don't ever get to see the children. But you're thinking about the child that's going to receive that quilt. And there is love in that quilt. There's prayers in that quilt. And it shows when they get it, they see the love and that somebody really does care for me. Amen. And so uh, that is the important thing to me is that quilt and I always put it in the bottom of the bag because that's where the prize is yes. and uh, they pull that out they're not meant for bedding they are a comfort uh, blanket and when they're picked up a lot of times they don't have a foster home ready for them and they take them to the office and there they're left sitting you know while the adults are running around doing other stuff and they're terrified surely but they have this bag and it's just the right size for them to bring it up around them and to Quilt. take the, uh, the bear. Yeah. We always put a large stuffed animal in there and it gives them something to hold and to listen to them. It listens to their problems. They cry into it. It's their new best friend. And with that blanket and that large stuffed animal, it comforts them and they generally will go to sleep until they're taken and put where they need to be. Please share the story that you've shared with me previously about the little girl who was found in the closet. That one breaks my heart. It's really hard to uh, tell that story because you can't imagine people treating their children this way. But they did a drug bust on this home and uh, it was filth. It always is filth. Mm -hmm. And they thought they had everything, and uh, they heard a baby crying. And the baby was in the 
closet and it had nothing. It was just laying in the closet like so much garbage. And it had been so battered and abused. They had slapped it around. It, it's a little, it's girl. a little girl. She was about 13 months old and her hearing was affected and her eyesight was affected. Mm, and whenever they'd touch her, she'd start screaming. And uh, one of the caseworkers had one of these bags in her trunk and she went and got the quilt out of there and brought it in and wrapped the baby up in it. And as soon as she was wrapped up in the blanket, she stopped crying. Mm. When they got her to the hospital, they took the blanket away, you know, because they needed to examine her and she'd just start screaming again. So the doctor asked him to bring the blanket in. As soon as that blanket touched her, she stopped crying and they were able to work with her. And he said, that blanket goes with that baby every place she goes. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, I'm just given a thumbnail of the whole thing. You can get the full story online on our website. Uh, it's called The Blanket Story. And this was down in Texas that this took place. And it just, uh, I always know when uh, Jack is reading that story because I hear him sniffing. Yeah. Because it, it is one that just really, it breaks your heart. It is heartbreaking to think about how these children are abused and neglected. Yes. But no matter how abused and neglected a child might be, it is a traumatic thing to be separated from Absolutely. the familiarity of their parents. Yes. I mean, kids are going to love their parents one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So when, when a, a little child is separated and suddenly probably has never had anything this nice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to have their very own bag, a handmade quilt that's been prayed over, that, as you said, it's just a comfort for them to put around their shoulders or on their lap. Have some a, a new best friend, a, a teddy bear or these things, and the personal products that they need. Mm -hmm. That is so special. Now, I want to, we, we want to, Susan, get you in on here. But first, before you tell how you join this, Tell us, give us a little background on Susan Schnell. Su I can't even say it. Susan <laughs> Schnell. How, how did you grow up? Did you grow up in a Christian home? I did. I grew up, actually, my past, my husband, sorry, my father was a pastor. So I grew up in the Adventist church. Yes, okay. I am a PK. And uh, we moved around a lot. But, and then I met my husband at Union College, and he was a theology student, so I married a pastor as well. <laughs> so you went from one pastor to another, That's pastor's right. home to another pastor's <laughs> That's right, home. yes. So how, how did you become involved? How did you even learn about this ministry? Well, I learned about it initially at a women's retreat. Barbara was there. <laughs> And she was one, one of the people that they interviewed uh, about her ministry. And originally I thought, what a great ministry, but I don't know how to sew. And so I just sort of put it behind me and didn't really think much about it because I thought, well, I can't really do anything with that. And then it wasn't long after I moved to Maine and one of our members of our church there was she had a chapter and she was doing this program. And so I started buying toys for the bags and started helping her put some, the, some of the bags thing. together. And so that's initially how I got involved and I was just so excited about it. And then we moved again, moved to Tennessee. And there I was talking with one of our church members and she was telling about how she sewed and different things and I thought, you know, this can be a good partnership. I don't know how to sew, but I can work with her and we can start a chapter here. So she and I started the chapter there. We served seven counties. We still, she still is, I've moved again, but she still is serving seven Thanks counties God. there. Yes. And so, you know, with that partnership, so I had the organizational skills and I was able to do some speaking to Kiwanis clubs and different, different civic groups um, to raise some funds. And so I did that part of it and she sewed the quilts. Amen. And, and we also worked with quilting guilds as well. Mm -hmm. And they provided us with quilts 
also. So it's a, it's a nice outreach, not just for the children, although that's our main focus, but also for other people to become involved. Community involved. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So obviously, uh, you began this ministry in 2004, Barbara, when mm -hmm. God gave you and exactly. your daughter simultaneously yeah, the same idea. That's awesome. And uh, that's a lot of years that you've put into this, but it didn't just stop with you. No. you uh, I'm going to have to put you down, darling. <laughs> I want to hold on to me. Isn't that funny? Even as an adult, we do that. But it didn't just stop with you is what I should say. No. Uh, it was a God idea. He yeah. planted the seeds within your heart, but then you began sharing about this. How many states now have It's My Very Own chapters? Well, the last count we had was 42 states, but I must add that uh, 3ABN is responsible for this as well, because after our first interview, I'll tell you, people have huge hearts, Amen. and they care about children Amen. and don't like to see them abused. And this did hit home on a lot of people and the phone began to ring, and uh, it kept me really busy for a while after the interview. And it was so touching to hear the people call, and they would give me a bit of a uh, life story on their own, sure. and why they wanted to do it, and how could they do it. And that was my part to play in it. And so I've had the privilege of talking to almost every one of these people. And the, uh, the, thing, the way the Lord has set it up is that each uh, person that signs this up and a chapter started, that's an individual. They do not answer, you know, to, lack of a better word, the head office. I don't like that, but anyway, that's the only way I can explain it. Uh, they have to do their own fundraising. They go out and do everything themselves. They get into the community. And we had the most delightful experience. When we first did it, uh, the Lord was pulling us through. You know, all you have to do is just hang on to his shirt tail and he'll yeah. take you where yeah. he wants you. And there was a, a community uh, meeting that they had once a month and it was all the different organizations would come together and they would tell what they were doing and they always invited a speaker. And uh, so I heard about all this and so I invited myself and uh, asked them if they needed somebody to speak and they said, oh yes. Well, then I went with my display and the one thing I did, and that was another thing that was whispered in my ear by the Lord, he said, get the news. Get a newspaper reporter in there which I did. And the newspaper reporter was so uh, engrossed in this and so uh, taken by it that when she gave her report in the newspaper, we only have a once a week newspaper in our town, and I got better than three-fourths of a page in the newspaper Praise talking God. about this with telephone number and all of the, the necessary uh, right. information. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, our town just opened their hearts up and I was getting all kinds of donations of things like this. I mean, we, we, we kind of depend on our community to keep us supplied. Mm -hmm. None of this is bought. It's all supplied from, the, from your community and there were people volunteering to do things because they realized the necessity. And the beautiful part about having it, um, the chapters being separate, is because they can say all of the things that are donated, any monies that are donated, goes right back into the community to the children that nobody in that chapter gets anything out of it. It's Amen. all volunteer. Amen. And it's just amazing how people respond. And that's why I say I have seen people open their hearts up so wide. And it's just, it's a real delight to work for the Lord, I'll tell Amen. you. It is. But you know, I have to say this, it is 
simplistic in nature mm -hmm. as far as starting uh, uh, a ministry. It is such a simple, sweet mm -hmm. idea, yet it has such an impact. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that as these quilts are being handmade, they're being prayed over every stitch. And the little child to whom this is going, they're thinking about that. And so when that blanket, when a child wraps that blanket around them, it's just like those prayers are there with them. Now, I love your story, Susan, when you said you heard Barbara tell this moving story and you think that's a wonderful ministry, but I don't sew. See, this is something that we all have to realize is that Sometimes you see something and you think, well, I can't do that. But go ahead and ask, what can I do, Lord, to help that ministry? Because the synergy, when God brings people together Amen. who have organization, one can sew, one can organize, or one yes. can go out and speak. This is what it's all about, yes. right? Yes. So did you, when you began a chapter, did, was there a manual for you to go by? Tell us a little more about how chapters can begin. Okay, yes, there is a manual. Barbara developed this manual early on. It's a, an amazing piece of work, actually, that she did. And she describes, you know, everything step by step of how to start a group. She also has quilt patterns in there and step by step how to make a quilt, how to make the bag. And so, and that can be found on our website at imvo.org. IMVO, it's my very own. Correct, IMVO. yes. Okay. And so the manual is on the website and it can be downloaded. So that describes, you know, really everything that you need to know to how to do it. And there's also forms on the website, thank you notes, letters for the child. Many things are on the website that you can just download and start your so own program. So how do you, how do you go, what do you do? Just go to DC? SF and say, hey, I want, and, and that's the Department of Child Protective Services, right? Just say, we want to provide bags for your social workers to take out so that the children have something. How do you make that it's, connection? It's actually best to take a bag with you, have a demonstration bag, because they can't, they can't resist that. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah. but yes, you just go, because I found, I tried calling and trying to get an appointment. It just doesn't work. So I just walked in and took a number and <laughs> sat until they called my number and asked to speak with the social worker and had my bag with me and described it to them and you know they just can't turn you down mm -hmm. it's so it's such a wonderful program because it's completely free to them mm -hmm. it's made so easy for them and it gives them a chance to have something to give to a child that is under traumatic circumstances. And how do you do this? Because obviously it's a little different for boys, a little different for girls. You've got various age ranges. You've mentioned the 12 year old boy who was so excited about his toothbrush, but also the little baby that needed mm -hmm. the comfort of the quilt. Yes. What Do you tell us how that system works? We do have several categories of age groups. So we um, have zero to three, four to seven, eight to 12 and 13 to 17. And sometimes some groups do an infant by themselves rather than zero to three, but um, there's many ways you can do it. But we have all these different categories and gender. We do uh, some for girls in that, those categories and some for boys. Amen and amen. Now, you said that our sweet Susan here came to you straight from the Lord. Tell us the story of how Susan got connected because may, do you want to say your age? I don't mind. You don't <laughs> mind at all. You're 81 years old. Yes. So you knew that it was kind of, the, the Lord was impressing you mm -hmm. with your husband's health and, and Jack is a handful, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> He's a sweetheart, but he is so cute. So you your husband isn't in the best health and you realized it's time to kind of pass the baton to someone else. But you were dragging your feet. Tell us how Susan came to you. Well, we hadn't even asked the Lord, you know, what to do. He knows everything, you know that. Absolutely. And uh, we were talking about it and I said, you know, we need a fresh, we need freshness uh, because uh, 
I felt that the view was getting old like me, and we needed <laughs> <laughs> we needed some fresh ideas, and I did not want to. I I wanted to stop because of the, all these reasons, but I didn't want to just stop it and forget it because it it isn't my ministry. It's Amen. God's, Amen. and I wanted somebody in there that would be committed and it mean as much to her or him, I didn't specify. Uh, that's what we were hoping for. Well, you couldn't just put an ad out there and say, I need somebody that can answer to, to this. volunteer and do this. Or... And so we were talking about it and the Lord decided that we were talking too long and no action. <laughs> so he says, get a grip and let's do it. And right at the same time as this was going on, Susan sends me an email wanting to buy a manual because she was going to start a chapter. And then she just put a little almost PS on it, you know, uh, if you ever need any spokesperson, well, I'd be glad to do it. And uh, when I read that, I said, aha, the Lord says, she's your girl. So I just, she'd put her phone number on there. So I called her up. And I'm a bottom liner. I don't beat around the bush. And I offered her the job and she wasn't thinking that. And I said, well, you talk it over with your husband. And if you are in Everybody. agreement, uh, then let's talk. And it wasn't but an hour or two later and she calls me and she says, well, I think I'd like to do it. Amen. And so it's really, uh, uh, I was very pleased and I have no qualms about passing the baton on to her because it is his and I wanted it to continue the way he laid it out. And she is doing, she's following right along with what the Lord laid out. And uh, it's like having a child, you know, and, yes, and uh, some more grandchildren, but it does have an effect. Uh, the outreach possibilities is so marvelous mm -hmm. because you can go to these different ones. Like now she mentioned the Quilters Guild. If you don't sew, that's a good place to find people that do. Amen. And, uh, and you tell them all about it and it, the word spreads. Mm -hmm. And if you present it in just the right way, you have quilts made for you indefinitely. And uh, so God is, like I say, He is awesome. And it's something that um, when we think about the impact this is making, God, God knew He couldn't just let go of this. And He needed somebody, as you said, with fresh ideas. So when Susan came aboard, she started doing some new things. And you actually, your son, you updated the website. And there were so many things that were uh, being renewed, if you will. But this thing fascinates me because it's such a simple idea. On every bag, they now put a postcard. And on the back of this, it says, this is from this bag, the boy, infant to three years old. Mm -hmm. Tell us what is the purpose of this stamped postcard? Well, we just found that so many times when we would deliver the bags, we would not hear from the from DCFS, and we were we didn't didn't know when to replace Replenish. the bags, mm -hmm. and we would call, and it was hard to get a hold of people. Mm -hmm. And so I finally thought, you know, we need to make this easy, and so we came up with this idea of the postcard that we put it on the bag, and when they give the bag to the child, they take the postcard off and they just stick it in the mail. That's and so then idea. we get it in the mail and we know exactly which bag to replace. Amen. Well, I know after your, I think your second time here, now you've actually got, uh, Barbara is the national director, but Susan is the international director. So that tells us it's this ministry has reached mm -hmm. beyond the United mm -hmm. States. Uh, what countries are you in now? In Canada, in Australia, and New Zealand. Okay, mm. okay. Actually, there's more too, but uh, they haven't been really active.
but the interest is there. Good. And sometimes you can't just, uh, the manual isn't in their language. Yes. Which makes that, but we do have a Spanish manual so that those that are Spanish speaking people, it's this exact manual, excuse me, and it was translated, this is interesting, another thing that God has done, we were at an ASI uh, meeting, and uh, it was, I think it was down in Dallas, I think is when it was, but anyway, this woman came up to me, and she had a booth, but it was with a school on the border, a church school, and she took that with her, and that was part of their lesson was to translate the manual into Spanish. Praise God. And so we have it in Spanish as well as in American language. Amen. And you know, I, I'm going to say this, it sounds strange, but it's bittersweet that the ministry is growing mm -hmm. as rapidly yes. as it is. It's bitter because it's the drug problem is just pervasive around the world. It doesn't matter. It crosses all social economic borders. Amen. It doesn't matter the culture. We're just mm -hmm. seeing that it, it is just such a tragedy. But what happens to the little babies mm -hmm. is really horrid. Mm -hmm. And thank you for being willing to accept the baton. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little about what how can people become involved? What are you looking for? There's many ways that people can become involved. One way is to look up and see if there is a chapter in their area. You can look it up on the website. And it's my very own is the name of the mm -hmm. ministry. Yes, and it's it is. I-M-V-O dot org. Correct. Okay. So they can look up online and see if there's one in their local area. And if so, they can ask how they can participate. You know, they can donate items for the bags. They can help put the bags together. They can sew quilts if they know how to sew or sew bags. If not, if there's not a one in their area, a chapter in their area, they can start a chapter. Amen. Amen. And, and that's a very precious thing to think about. Now, how difficult is it to start a chapter? It's really not difficult at all because you really just have to get a few people that are willing to help you and find someone to sew, as we've talked about before. But um, find someone who doesn't mind speaking at different find civic Find someone events. who doesn't mind speaking. Yeah. And, you know, there's also some things people can send thank you notes for people that have donated. There's just a lot of things okay. that they can do, but it's not hard to start. You just gather the materials and... Yeah. You're actually in your third different location from Maine to I am. Florida to Georgia now, right? Yes. And uh, it's just something that this is part of your DNA now. Isn't yeah, it? it really is. I love it. How has it changed you? It, I think just, I often would see with the opioid crisis and with, I'd see things about children that are being neglected and abused. And I just, I didn't know how could I help? It just seemed so overwhelming, such a big problem. Yes, yes. But with this, once I got involved with this, I thought, this is a way, this is a very practical, but very imp impactful way to help in this situation. So it just, it just has changed me because it allows me to do something for the Lord and to do something for these children. And you know, that's one thing, and Barbara, I know you've been, you and I have been around a while, we can say this. <laughs> People are looking for yes. something. You know, we hear it all the time. My husband tells me every day, he works in the pastoral department and on the way home, I'll say, well, honey, what good calls did you have today? And we will pray about the prayer request that, you know, we'll talk about it and then we'll pray again. But he often says, People are wanting to become involved. They're looking for a ministry. They're looking for a purpose in their life. And you don't have to be a quilter. You don't have to be a seamstress. Susan can't sew a lick. It's true. <laughs> so, so, but you can get involved and 
you know, what impresses me about this, not only are you doing something extremely meaningful, meaningful for the child, yeah. but what a great way to introduce your church to people in the community. Exactly. I mean, because this is the type of project that can be interdenominational, that yes. people would it jump is. aboard, but they can get to know you as mm -hmm. a Christian. I just think it's amazing, and I'm very excited about it. You know, I just wanted to add about the simplicity of uh, the sewing part. My husband, when we started this, he sewed all the bags. He even got really? his own fabric, chose everything. <laughs> he sewed them. He did them all, and they were top quality. And so... See, Jack's just full of surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well... I gave him his, you know, his option. I said, honey, I said, I can't do it all by myself. I'm going to need some help. I said, I'll give you a choice. You can either sew the bags or the quilts. <laughs> and all he did was just look at me, walked out of the room. And I thought, well, okay, I'll go ahead and do it myself. And he comes back and he says, how hard will it be to make the bags? How and precious. from that moment on, I showed him how to use the machine. Well, yeah, how to use the machine, the measurements and all of that. And I can't begin to tell you how many bags this man has sewn. Mm -hmm. So they, you don't have to be a woman to be involved in this. Anybody can become involved. Amen, amen. And then uh, what all is featured on your website? It's still in progress. But we do have, we have the story, some of the stories and testimonials about about how these bags have been impactful to children. We also, as we said, we have the manual. We have some forms um, that people can use. The logo is new. We have a new logo um, since we've transitioned to the new website. So we have the logo on there that people can use in their own, the brochures and that sort of thing. The brochures are also on there as well if people want to download a brochure and then they can edit it to put their own chapter information on there, contact information. And I guess the so it, it, the, the, everything, it's a turnkey operation is it what really you're is. saying. You mm -hmm. just can, you've got this source of information that you can mm -hmm. go to. And what we want to do right now is that I know we've got uh, your address, your web address uh, on an address roll. And we want you, I just really believe that there are so many, not just one, but there are so many people who are saying, I can do this. I can be part of this. Or you may not sew, but you think, I know someone who can sew. I can call them about this. Or, and they don't even have to be a church member. You can find other people. This is the kind of thing that peop, anybody that's got a heart wants to help these little babies. So here's how you can get in touch with Barbara or Susan. Children removed from their home due to parental drug abuse and neglect are often left with nothing. And volunteers with It's My Very Own try to make their lives a little brighter with bags of love to care for their immediate needs. To support their ministry, visit imvo.org. That's imvo.org. You may also call area code 423-408-3142 or write to It's My Very Own, 400 Hunt Club Road, St. Mary's, Georgia, 31558. That's amazing. During the address roll, Barbara was telling me how great this is as an icebreaker with other Christians in other churches. We're Seventh-day Adventist Christians. What has your experience been? Well, uh, we've got, like I say, chapters all over the place, and we are glad to uh, take on the different denominations to uh, be a part of it because we have had so much support from the different places. I just have to say this. The one church, 
uh, had a, uh, the kids wanted to have a, a ministry that they could do. So it was the kids that were doing this. But of course, you know, parents always have to be involved. And they decided to have a bake sale. And the bake sale went like all bake sales. Only half a dozen people bring stuff and there you are and that's the amount. Well, they were so interested in this ministry and the children being so interested. Uh, one guy paid $50 for a cookie. Oh, how precious. And I mean, that's the way it went. They just donated, you know. And I got the shock of my life. The kids presented me the, the monies. And when I looked at that check, I almost lost my teeth. It was over $800. Oh, praise God. That is amazing. And I mean, everybody has the heart to help these Amen. children. Amen. We're all children of God. And, and you've had the opportunity to go speak at many other different yes, I have to share this. But how important is it? Everything that we see here is top quality. We see that everything is wrapped. It's new. How important is it? that things that go into this bag are special? I always tell when a new chapter is wanting to start up, I always tell them that it's so important that you put new things in. These children probably have never had anything new. So put new things in and not to put anything in that you wouldn't give to your own children. Okay. You, you want it to be This isn't running down to special. the dollar store and getting the... 10 for one. <laughs> <laughs> right, you want to have something that, that they will know that they are very special. And kind of lift their self-esteem. Yes. You told us about one young man who, this was so special to him, what did he do with his quilt? He actually took, kept his quilt and took his quilt to college. In that precious? With him. That tells you that the impact yes. that that quilt had. And, and if we had time, she's t been telling me stories about one little girl that ran away uh, from the foster care home. And when they picked her up, she had her stuffed animal and her quilt with her. Because yes. that's, it's my very own. That's yes. how special it was mm -hmm. to her. Well, we've got to do a news break. And then we're going to come back in just a moment to have a final thought with Barbara and Susan. We've been talking today with Barbara Neer and Susan Schnell with It's My Very Own is the name of the ministry. Tell the story you just shared with me about the little girl who the caseworker took her there. She was in her home of her, her new bedroom at the foster care home. And what happened? Well, as the uh, caseworker was doing the final things uh, with the foster mom, the little girl came out. And she said, Miss Pat, would you come in and see, would you like to come in and see my bedroom? She said, certainly. So she went in there and she had taken everything out of the bag. The bag was folded up neatly and put on the pillow along with all of the things that were in the bag. And the quilt was spread out onto her bed. And she stepped back and she says, isn't this just beautiful? Oh, you know, this is so special, but the, the, the Red Cross actually contacted you after yes. a really major fire where 19 children were mm -hmm. affected and they lost everything they had. And what happened? Well, uh, this was on a Tuesday that they contacted us and they wanted to know if they qualified for our program. Well, it took me all of two seconds to say yes. Yeah. And so we went to work. Well, I did not have enough quilts and stuff. And uh, so I had everybody, the community and everything else. And by Saturday, we delivered 19 bags Praise plus God. eight bags for the mothers. Praise mm -hmm. God. Thank you so much for what you do for the glory of God and, and for helping these children. And we just pray that you will consider becoming involved with this ministry in your own community. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.